obviously some, some differing views on the committee here in terms of our energy resources and, and how we utilize them to the benefit uh, of our country, uh, certainly to the benefit of places like Alaska, which is, a, of course, a producing state. So I'd like to talk uh, about a, a few of the, uh, the, the issues, um, and I'll be a little parochial here just to start off. But on Friday, the Bureau of Land Management released a draft uh, supplemental EIS for the Willow Project within the NPRA, and uh, I think you saw the press release on that. I welcomed that step. Uh, I can't stress enough the need for the department to, to move forward with final approval for the Willow Project. Uh, it is my very sincere hope that the department will, will soon be able to issue permits so work can begin on this project during the, the upcoming winter season 22-23. Uh, we have had the conversation, uh, Madam Secretary, I've had the conversation with the President, I've had the conversation with just about everybody in the administration that will listen to me on Willow, uh, because I, I firmly believe that we need to have a realistic plan for the future of our energy supply, and I think that Alaska definitely fits within that plan. Um, the Chairman mentioned the, the near record high gas prices that, that families are, are, are seeing. Um, it's bad all over the country, but if you're in a community like Yakutat, I, I follow the, the, the weekly gas prices in um, various communities around the state. Yakutat is paying about $7.25 uh, a gallon for fuel. Um, it's just tough. And so they're asking me, what, what are the tools that are available? What can the administration be doing? What can Congress be doing to, to, help, to help dampen uh, these price increases that we're seeing? And, and for me, it comes down to, to the basics of, of economic supply and, and demand. And I am one who believes very strongly that, that the administration and, and here in this country, we need to use those tools at our disposal to increase domestic production, to improve our energy security, particularly as we're seeing the, the global disruptions and, and the unrest. And I've, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Alaska stands ready, willing, and certainly able to be a big part of that solution all while we insist on, on meeting the highest environmental standards in the world. The chairman has mentioned the five-year plan for the offshore oil and gas uh, that the department recently proposed. And again, given what we're seeing here uh, at home uh, over in Europe, I truly, truly believe that our national security interests require that we increase our domestic supply of these resources, including from, from our offshore areas. Um, you know, I've heard, I've heard the reference before that, that oil is, is an addiction. Um, I recognize that we have a reliance on it. Um, but when I think of, of an addiction like a heroin addiction, I think about it as, as, as something that um, there, is no, there is no upside to, to heroin addiction. Um, our our reality as a country is that we have a resource that not only we need right now, but the world needs right now. Um, and it is not just to fuel our vehicles. I think we're, we're, we're moving to, to different transportation fuels, but that is a transition. But everything, everything that we, we use practically has some aspect of petroleum in it. And, and so until we can figure out what that substitute is, this petroleum base that really powers and moves and, and allows us to function as a modern society is, is, something, is something that is in demand. And again, we can choose to, to look to others to meet that demand and make ourselves more vulnerable, uh, more reliant on others, um, and particularly others that don't even like us or whose environmental track record is awful or whose human rights track record is awful. So 
I, uh, I have said, as we transition from a, a, a fossil-based society, a transition requires that uh, there be a, a, a path forward that is sensible for your economy and, and sensible, uh, really, technologically. And so we got a lot of work to do there. I feel strongly when it comes to the five-year plan that the administration have, has to move, move and move quickly to finalize a plan that keeps at least the current acreage available for offshore leasing, including in, in my state. But your proposed plan included the option of holding no lease sale at all, which I, I think that that's unacceptable. Um, for the department to even consider a five-year plan that would include no lease sales, I, I just don't think makes sense. And I, I think it's actually harmful to our economy and our national security. The national interest demands the administration avoid a costly gap in leasing and that it conducts offshore sales. So I want to see annual sales in Cook Inlet, not one sale every five years. Failure to have meaningful oil and gas programs, including in the 1002 area where the administration is illegally disregarding the law, will reduce domestic investment at the worst possible time for our country and for our global allies. I think the president needs to focus on places like Alaska, not Saudi Arabia, not Venezuela, not Iran, and then, and then work with us to achieve just that. So I've, I've said before, Madam Secretary, Alaska is, is willing uh, and able and ready to increase our nation's and our allies' energy security. All we really need is permission from the federal government uh, to get moving, get those permits, and, and we are there.